Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a bookish one in case you weren't aware based on the title. That was such a stupid thing to say. Today is going to be a reading update. I haven't been doing the greatest with reading wrap ups or TBRs. Because I'm not able to fit in a lot of bookish videos each month, I thought that they were just going to be taking over and I wanted to get some varied content out for you guys. So today is going to be a bit of a mashup. I'm going to talk about a couple of the books that I finished most recently, what I'm currently in the middle of, which is like four or five books, and also my reading plans for the immediate future, like my TBR for like this upcoming week or two, if that makes sense. So it's really, yeah, just a current reading update. If you guys are still enjoying bookish content on my channel, be sure to let me know in the comments below. I know a lot of baby content has been going up, but that's because I'm due very, very soon at this point. Um, my pregnancy updates are way behind, but I'm actually um, expecting to have this baby in less than a month. Um, so I'm just trying to get all of those videos up in a timely manner based on my pregnancy when reading is just a constant in my life. I don't know if that's making sense at all, but if you want more bookish content, let me know in the comments below so I know that I should be making it more of a priority. Okay, that's enough rambling. Let's talk about a couple of the books I finished most recently that I'm not sure if I've talked about on my channel. Let's just talk about I don't know, the last four books I've read or something. Firstly, I finally finished A Dance with Dragons by George R. R. Martin. I actually finished this in November, but I had been reading it since February of 2019. This took me so long. These books are so dense and long that I found myself reading like 50 to 100 pages and then switching to another book even if it was another fantasy just so I had time to digest and then I've had a hard time picking this back up even though I really enjoyed the series. I'm saying I finished the series although I know that the Song of Ice and Fire series is not actually over but George R. R. Martin has been saying that Winds of Winter is that next is so close to being done it's coming soon it's coming soon for years and I don't know if it's ever going to come out so I'm not getting my hopes up but I really did enjoy this. I've never watched the TV show actually because I wanted to finish the first five books before jumping in. I didn't want any spoilers. I did give this book four stars. It wasn't my favorite in the series. It was pretty slow going for like the first two thirds almost maybe one half to two thirds and then towards the end like so much happened I still can't even wrap my mind around all of the events that occurred people were dying people were captured people aren't who you think they are and it was just kind of wild I don't like how the fifth book and the fourth book follow the same timing um but you're following different characters. I really didn't enjoy that because I found myself missing the characters that we got in the fourth book versus and they're not in this book at all. Um, so I hope he doesn't do that for books six and seven. But I guess we will see. But yes, officially done the five core books that are out in the Song of Ice and Fire series. I don't know if I'm going to pick up the um, like extra books that he's released yet. Haven't really decided but I just feel like this is such an accomplishment. I've been reading this series for years. The other three most recent reads that I finished I actually got from my library and have since returned. First is Hashtag Girl Boss by Sofia Amoruso. This is a nonfiction um, about the creator or founder slash CEO of Nasty Gal which started out as a vintage reselling business on eBay and has now turned into this huge fashion company and I enjoyed it. I gave it three stars but I actually didn't find I connected with Sophia really at all. I did try and watch the Netflix series when that came out a while ago and never finished it 
she's just like too angsty for me is that the descriptor I'm looking for I'm not really sure just like you know when you're reading a book especially any book but kind of especially nonfiction, if you know that if you met this person in real life you wouldn't immediately be friends like you don't have the same vibe like me and Sophia would not be friends that doesn't mean she's a bad person that doesn't mean like I have any negative feelings towards her I just didn't have that connection and a lot of the ways that she viewed the world especially when she was talking about in the past I was just like rolling my eyes all the time this book goes back and forth between being like autobiographical how she started where she came from things she did at the very beginning to really random beginner business tips both as a CEO and getting hired for the first time somewhere it's like it was just a really weird book I don't think it was edited and put together that well like her editor or publisher or whoever should have maybe rearranged the book a little bit there are parts that were so different from one another that maybe it could have been two different books um, like the subject matter wasn't quite the same it was just really strange I did like it though like I liked certain parts of it it's just when I think about the book as a whole it was just really off for me then I read Fence 2 which is part of a graphic novel series that I got turned on to by Books with Chloe I gave the second installment four stars these are really cute super quick I mean there's like 20 how many pages 27 pages in this and I'm really enjoying it it is about two rivals are going to the same boarding school they have fencing scholarships and they're competing to get on the school's fencing team because they're hoping to beat there's like a higher ranked school that always wins at nationals or something they want to finally beat them so they um what's that called I want to say drafted these boys to try out for the team but that's not recruited wow they recruited these two boys to try out for the team uh, at this specific boarding school and they're like arch nemesis because one beat the other in another competition and it's just really cute so far there seems to be a lot of LGBTQ plus representation it is an all boys boarding school but there is seems to be a trans character there is gay characters and so far I'm really enjoying the series I actually have the third over on my TBR bookshelf over there to pick up really soon and lastly I finished off PS I Still Love You by Jenny Han thankfully I liked this more than the first book although I still don't really think that this was necessary to be a trilogy this is the second book in the To All the Boys I've Loved Before series I wanted to continue reading this because I actually enjoyed the movie on Netflix and they are making a movie for the second one as well and in my Goodreads review, which my Goodreads is always linked down below if you're interested, I said, thank God Laura Jean seems to have grown up a bit. Her naivete, naivety, I don't know how to pronounce that word, annoyed me to no end in the first book. It wasn't as endearing as I'm sure it was meant to be. And I am team John Ambrose McLaren. So there's a new boy in town, kind of, in this book. And... I'm not going to spoil anything but I did definitely enjoy this book more than the first one but I still gave it three three and a half stars now let's talk about what I am currently reading so first and foremost I'm reading The Rescue by Nicholas Sparks Sparks this is my first pan those books which is a series that my friend uh, they Call Me Lulu started where we're going to pan the physical TBR that we have on our bookshelves. We're both from the painting beauty community on, well, I have a separate channel for mine. And we wanted to apply that concept to books. So this is the first one I drew at random. And I'm making pretty good progress on this. I'm finally, like, 
sucked into it. This is a reread for me, but I read it the first time when I was like 15, so I wanted to give it a chance and see if I wanted to continue to store this on my very limited spaced bookshelf. If it's not a four or five stars the second time, I'm okay with letting it go since I've already, this is my first reread and I don't know if I'm going to reread it like over and over if that makes sense, but so far I am still really enjoying it. And then I have a couple of other books I'm in the middle of that had to be returned to my library that I'm like re-added on to the wait list. The first is Daisy Jones and the Six. I got seven hours out of nine into this audiobook and I just couldn't squeeze in enough time to finish it. I underestimated how much time, one, that I'm allowed to hold on to audiobooks that I rent from my library um, because physical books you can hold on to for three weeks and then before they have to be returned or renewed and audiobooks it was like one week or something like that and I just didn't give it the time it needed but I'm really really enjoying listening to that audiobook so I'm on the wait list for that. Me and the kids were reading The Christmas Saurus by Tom Fletcher which is a middle grade fantasy novel and even though it's not Christmas anymore I just I did get put back on the wait list so we can finish reading it because it's cute anyway like I was really enjoying it as well and even Wyatt who's only two would sit down and uh, listen to the story and there's some illustrations and stuff throughout so we were really liking that and then I'm also in the middle of Girl Wash Your Face by Rachel Hollis. I wanted to read this after discovering her podcast and listening to so many episodes of that. I really do enjoy enjoy Rachel Hollis. I like her as a motivational speaker. I think she's such a girl boss. She's a mom of three boys and then they adopted a little girl as well I believe. I'm not really sure. I'm not like completely stalking her but I am really enjoying that book and a lot of people didn't love it based on the reviews I was looking at on Goodreads but I am finding it really motivational and it applies both to my business ventures as well as my personal life and just getting your shit together and I kind of really needed that like it's not an instructional type of motivational book like first you need to do this and then after that you do this it's just like teaching you to be confident in who you are, to make your family and your you know husband, your kids a priority, but still killing it in the workplace, things like that. I don't have a workplace unless I'm a stay-at-home mom who like works from home when I can. And I just I've really been enjoying it and I've also been enjoying like learning through her life experiences. So the book is structured in such a way where she has like a life lesson from her own life that she kind of like lays out for you what happened to her how it went what she learned from that and how it, how you can apply it to your own life and I've really been enjoying that now what I'm reading next so I have three books here which are like top priority on my TBR bookshelf. Does that mean these are going to be the exact ones I pick up next? No, probably not, but here we are. First, Divergent by Veronica Roth. This is the second book I drew in my Pan Those Books series. So um, this has been sitting on my shelf for so long. I specifically went and I bought this on Kijiji, which is like Craigslist, but Canadian, I think. Um, Spent five dollars for it, had to walk up to this really weird apartment building to get it and then I never ever read it and I watched the first movie and that's why I realized I wanted to read the books and I didn't watch the other movies because I wanted to read the books and I still haven't read it so it's a good thing that was pulled in my Pan Those Books series. I'm still trying to complete the winter readathon, <laughs> winter magical readathon and I'm I was having a hard time finding books to fit the prompts I was getting and match them with my Panos books and also the books that were due back to my library so soon. So I'm only on week two. 
I'm just going to keep it going until like literally the end of winter and hopefully by then I can finish all five prompts. She suggests Harry Potter but I actually want to reread City of Ashes. This is book two in the Mortal Instruments series because I started my reread over a year ago and by started my reread I mean I read City of Bones again and then stopped. So I really want to get on to the Infernal Devices etc um, because this the Mortal Instruments series is not my favorite. I read the first five books a really long time ago and never continued and I didn't know about the other series and how you're supposed to read them. So this is up next and this is what I'm going to be reading for that prompt of the Winter Magical Readathon. And then lastly, I'm so excited I finally got this from my library. I went on the waitlist as soon as my library like added it online that it was on order or whatever um, so I was you know there's a huge wait list but I finally got The Toll by Neil Schusterman this is the third book in the Ark of Scythe trilogy and I absolutely loved Scythe and Thunderhead I don't even know which one I enjoyed more because I gave Scythe five stars because I loved it so much and then the Thunderhead which is like the AI or the cloud it's the second book. He, he, I call him a he, but I mean, he's genderless. He's a, the cloud, but he, the Thunderhead, is such an interesting perspective to watch the story unfold from. The ending was mind blowing, and I really, really wish that I would have reread Scythe and Thunderhead before getting the toll because although I remember loving it and I like, remember the events in vague detail. I wish I could have reread the other two to get super excited for this, but when it said that it was en route to my local library, I didn't have time. And because this is a newer book, I'm not going to be able to renew it. So even though I just picked this up from my library, I'm going to have to read it pretty quickly. This is way chunkier than I was expecting. Way chunkier. I read a lot of books from my library because I like supporting my library and also it's not financially feasible for me to buy every book I want to read but this series is one that I will be asking for for either my birthday or Christmas next year or something like that because I 100% will reread this whole series and it's something I want to keep on my bookshelf. I didn't really explain what Scythe is. It's a YA sci-fi dystopian novel set in our future here on Earth where the cloud has developed into the Thunderhead and oversees the world in such a way that like everyone is fed, there's no disease, you can't be killed unless gleaned by a scythe which is like not the law enforcing body but they're the only people that are sanctioned to kill to keep the population under control. The buildings, the jobs, everything is so perfectly programmed for this world to maintain human population that you know they're not killing off the earth anymore. It's just a really interesting concept but also kind of creepy because it could definitely happen which I find super interesting. The romance in the first book was completely unnecessary. I totally agree with everyone on that, but I still kind of loved, I did totally love this series and I'm excited to finish, finish it off. You can't really see what I'm touching. But anyways, I feel like this video is way longer than I intended it to be, but that is my current reading update. The four books I finished recently, the four books I'm in the middle of, and the three books that I'm hoping to get to ASAP. Leave me your reading update, just a brief one, in the comments below. What's the last book you read? What are you currently reading? What are you reading next? I would love to know that. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up so that I know, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye! 